Hey, brand builder, Rory Vaden here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this interview. As always, it's our honor to provide it to you for free and wanted to let you know there's no big sales pitch or anything coming uh, at the end. However, if you are someone who is looking to build and monetize your personal brand, we would love to talk to you and get to know you a little bit and hear about some of your dreams and visions and share with you a little bit about what we're up to to see if we might be a fit. So if you're interested in a free strategy call with someone from our team, we would love to hear from you. You can do that at brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall, brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall. We hope to talk to you soon. Do you want to know how to be better on Instagram? Well, I've got three things that are going to help you do just that. And I'm going to make this as short and sweet as humanly possible. But I just wrapped up an amazing conversation with a newer friend of mine, uh, Chelsea Pites. And I had Chelsea on the podcast, The Influential Personal Brand Podcast. And we were having this conversation about how many people are like, man, I just whatever I do, it doesn't seem to be working and Instagram's not for me. And I keep trying this video content, but it's, you know, no one is liking it. It's not getting an engagement. So how do I be better at Instagram? Like, how do I be better on this platform? So here are the three takeaways that I think are really helpful uh, and tactical that will allow you to actually take some movement immediately into actually being better on the platform. Number one is you have to know how the algorithm works. And it's very simple. The algorithm rewards you when you spend more time on the platform. Surprise, right? It's not a secret, but we we think it's this mysterious thing that we can't figure out. And the truth is, no, it's quite simple. Um, they reward you when you spend more time there. And the most time that you can spend there is an engagement right? So it's responding to comments. It's uh, communicating and engaging in the DMs. Um, that matters. It's not just the content you post and how many people see it, but it's how much time are you spending on the platform and how much time are you engaging others on the platform? Because if you're engaging with others on the platform, then you're both spending time here. So if you're doing that with lots and lots and lots of people, then you're bringing more and more people back to the platform. And it's going to reward you for that because it knows that you're spending time there and you're bringing other people there. So it's not just about um, posting content. It's not just about great content. Those are prerequisites. Uh, it's not just about consistency. Those are ex expectations now. Now it's rewarding. It's like, well, how much time are you spending, right? This, These are businesses you know, like Meta is a business, a very successful high revenue business. So they're in the business of making money. And when you spend time on there, ad revenues go up and uh, more money comes in. So that is, it, it's simple. That doesn't mean we have to like it, but it's more time on the platform is how the algorithm works. So spend more time in engagement and comments and DMs. And the other parts are prerequisites. You have to be posting consistently. It has to be good content. It has to be searchable and findable. Those are prerequisites. Now it's how do we go from here? And it's more time on the platform. And what I love what Chelsea said. She said, the most important conversation is the communication that you're having on the platform. So that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is uh, don't forget that things, tactical things that you can do to become more findable and more searchable. So don't forget that uh, Instagram, like all other social media platforms, is a search engine. Just like Google, just like YouTube, uh, it's a search engine. People are going there searching for things, entertainment, education, uh, relationships, engagement, whatever, but there, it's a search engine. So you have to be findable. You have to be searchable. And there are two searchable fields on your profile that allow you to be more findable. One is your handle, right? So it can't be, you know, jogger123 underscore you know, 2023. It can't be it, right? You have to be findable. So as much as usually humanly possible, use your name, right? Mine is AJ underscore Vaden. So it's like, get as close to your name as humanly possible. Uh, but that's what people are finding. It's like, I type in people I meet all the time and they're like, oh yeah, just find me on Instagram. And I assume, oh, it must be your name since you said, go find me on Instagram. When it turns out, it's like, no, it's, you know, I can't even think of one right now, but it's like, you know, sassy says so. And I'm like, 
well, who, who the heck is sassy? I don't know who that is. Um, so you got to be findable, right? So that's the first place. And then the second is where your name goes, right? So uh, it's your profile and then it's um, your username, right? So it's like your handle and then it's like, what is the actual name? So like where that is, um, if you've got uh, the blue chip, then you've got to you also have something that's legally identifiable on your license. So my legal name I don't know if you knew this, it's not AJ, it's Amanda. So I had to come in there and put in a little bit more information. So it's Amanda Johns Vaden, little space brand builders group, because it's different than my handle, which is AJ Vaden, which is what I've gone by since age 10, but it's not my legal name. So I've got my legal name, Amanda Johns Vaden, and then brand builders group, because that's what I want to be associated with. That's why I want to be identified with. If people are searching for brand builders group or AJ, or in this case, Amanda, which no one is doing that. But I want everything to be defined and coalesced together that are searchable. And then the rest of the information in that profile section is helpful, but it's not searchable, right? So once somebody finds me or finds Brand Builders Group, um, then it's like, is this someone I want to follow? Uh, someone I want to look at their content? Someone I want to engage with? And I make it very clear, like, this is what you're going to get from me. And here's my call to action of how to engage with me off the platform. Those are all really helpful things because we're not trying to build um, our audiences just on social media, right? Social media to us, it's, it's an advertising vehicle. But what you really want to do is you want to move this relationship off of social media and into your email list or to uh, a blog subscriber or a podcast subscriber. But we're not trying to only access this relationship on the social media platform. We also want to have them on our platform so that relationship can be more intentional, more meaningful, more direct, right? So you got to have your handle. Then it's like what you choose to put in that username category. So, you know, it could be what you do. In my case, it's the name of the company. And then underneath that, it's like, what's going to appeal to the audience I'm serving? And then what's the call to action to engage with me off of this platform? So your profile section is actually really helpful. Uh, and mostly it's helpful in making you searchable. So make sure you capitalize that space as much as humanly possible. And then last but not last, uh, the importance of video content. Not everyone is going to love that we're talking about this yet again, uh, but video is uh, favored and preferred on all platforms, not just Instagram. And so this is something that we do have to learn and we do have to get better at if we want to have this component of you know social media, if we want social media to be a component of our lead generation, customer acquisition, employee retention, customer retention. But this is marketing. This is awareness. Uh, this is the game that we're in. This is how we reach people today. And we do it with valuable content. We do it with uh, relationship and engagement. And those things can happen at scale all across the world. It's not a bad thing um, to have this opportunity and access. We just have to know how to use it in the right way. So a uh, couple of uh, quick tips for creating video content, short and sweet. Save the best for first. Uh, you don't need to introduce yourself at the beginning of every video. People know who you are. For the most part, they're following you. They're engaging with you. Um, that can be found in the captions below. That can be found later out, later on. But they need to know, what am I going to get from this short video, right? So we need to start with the best content we have. Um, and so we need to lead with, you know, want to know how building a personal brand is going to double your income in the next 12 months? I bet you do. Then go into the content. But you want to start with a little bit of that marketing pitch. It's like, yeah, it's like, I believe that you're building your personal brand can double your income in the next 12 months. And I'm going to tell you three ways we can do that, right? Or maybe you're in uh, the dental business and you're going, hey, do you still have uh, metal crowns in your teeth? Want to know why those are linked to X, Y, and Z? It's like, yeah, I do. If I have metal in my teeth, I want to know that. So it's like, start with those headline statements. Uh, it's always helpful to start with a question uh, or a provocative statement, a fact, a statistic, but you want to start with something that's going to catch someone's attention. This is where that catchy marketing lingo is really helpful in your favor, but you want to give people what they're going to get right up front and you want to save the best for first. Um, then you want to make it short and sweet. Then you want to tell people, if you want to learn more, 
here's where you go, right? That's where you continue um, the relationship, continue the engagement. Uh, other quick things, and these came from Chelsea. I thought these were so helpful in our conversation. Um, and if you're watching this, um, then you can see what I'm doing. If not, I'm going to explain it. But uh, don't forget that if you're like using your camera to film, it's like you can just move your arm and get different angles, right? So it's like I can start here and then here and then here and then here and then here. And it's like all of a sudden you've got a multi uh, camera angle shoot by just using your iPhone, but movement matters. It catches the attention, it breaks things up. If it's just my little head in a tiny little box and there's no movement happening the whole time, just like this, we kind of get distracted kind of easy. Like we we don't have high attention spans today. And so we've got to keep it engaging. That's why it needs to be short. And there's got to be some interaction. Um, also, if it's your tiny head in a box, you can't use your hands like I'm doing right now, which also really helps with the engagement factor. You can see when I'm getting excited or when I'm slowing things down, um, those things matter. The other thing is that you've got to have captions. Not everyone uh, listens to everything on audio they read. So having the captions makes a big difference, not just because you have uh, some people in your audience who are hard of hearing, but because many people are walking through the airport or sitting in their cubicle at work and they're not supposed to be maybe listening to things aloud, but they can be reading, they can be scrolling. And so it's paying attention to the multifaceted ways of going like, we need movement, we need sound. Uh, but we also need the words and that's easy. It's all built into the platform that allows you to do that. Now, last uh, but not least, this is the last thing. It's uh, don't forget that you don't have to create every single piece of content that you make. Now, original content matters a lot because it's your story and everything else has already been said except for your story. So tell your story. Um, no one else has your unique personal experiences, life stories, only you do. So tell the thing that no one else can give the ideas and the examples that only you can because they're yours. Um, but that's not the only thing that you have to create content about and you can vary it up. So it doesn't feel so overwhelming. Like, oh, I have to come up with this brand new stuff every day or every week. No, you don't. Um, you can come up with it as it feels good and original to you. But don't forget every single day you get asked a certain amount of questions that you know the answers to. Could you share that content in a video? Don't forget every single day you ask questions that you need answers to. Once you get them, could that be a piece of content you share with your audience? Uh, every single day um, you go places, you see people, you have experiences, you uh, encounter interesting or weird moments. Um, can other people relate to those? It, does that create the human element that you need? Does that create relational value where other, somebody else can go, ha, huh, me too. That happened to me today too. Like, I'm so glad I'm not the only one. Or I can't believe this has happened to somebody else before. I thought I was the only one, right? And it happens at both levels. And so don't forget, you don't have to create every single piece of content based on your original content, although that's helpful and important and valuable. But there's also everyday moments that we all experience all around us that allow you to create that human relationship online where someone else can go, me too. If you want to be better at Instagram, uh, it doesn't take, it's not rocket science, right? It doesn't take uh, a neurosurgeon to figure this out, uh, but it does take some time and effort and intention if you want to do it. And it's not for everyone. So don't feel like you have to. And I think that's a big takeaway. It's like, if this is not the platform of choice for you because your audience doesn't live there, skip, pass, go, move on. Don't worry about it. Um, these, there is no like rule of like, this is what you have to do to be successful. Uh, you do not have to have millions of followers to have a, a massive impact on lives that you are touching. Uh, you do not have to have a, uh, viral videos to make a difference. You you don't just focus on the one focus on engaging and building relationships, just like you do offline, right? It takes time and work to build relationships and in, in real life in person. It takes the same amount of work online. So don't forget that um, time matters and it takes time to make this work. So there you have it. Here's how to be better at Instagram with three quick tips that you can start doing today. See you soon.